Right, so we're now in part two and I'm going to continue with this. And if you haven't seen part one, then do go back and watch it. But what I'm doing is I'm actually doing a piece of artwork which I am going to fold into an envelope, like an art envelope, so that I can send it to somebody as a present. Okay, so um, what I want to do is have a little look at this and see what do I need to do. And I'm going to work with a few pencils just to start off with, I think, uh, just to get a few of the shapes back. And then I'll go back into the gouache and the watercolour. So um, let's pick some colours. I think I'm going to take a, a pale lilac here and uh, just see how that works on this surface. And uh, let's just see what happens. And as you can see, I'm going over the edges because um, it doesn't matter to me if, um, if the lines go over the edge. In fact, I, I want them to. So just carry on. And you know, because I put clear gesso on this in the first film, um, it really, it really literally is like, uh, I'm gonna lift this up and show you, it's like working on sandpaper. So these pencils are dynamic when you use them. I mean, they are good quality anyway. Um, these are my Albrecht Jura. Um, watercolour pencils. There's a lot of pigment in them, um, but the surface that's like sandpaper, it just makes such a huge difference. Um, so I love working on top of this. Right, just add a bit here and there. And I'm just sort of looking at my picture here to see what kind of lines I want. This comes out especially well when you work on a, on a darker colour. And I really like it when you can see the lines, as I said. But it really w wears down the pencil quite quickly, so I'll have to sharpen that again. Or maybe I'll just go over it into another colour. Right, I'm just going to, before I finish, I think I've got enough left, uh, do a few of these little things over here. colour now. Um, I think I'll take a darker blue and go back over here and see what happens if I do a few little marks here and there. That's very yellow um, so I want to sort of almost get rid of that a bit. I'm just going to see what happens if I use a bit of this ivory colour and then possibly a bit of the turquoise. This is a dark turquoise, I think it's called Helio Turquoise. I love this colour. Let's use a bit of it over here as well perhaps. I just want to show you what happens when you add a bit of water to these pencils. So I'm just going to do that so that you can see what happens. So you can see the amount of pigment there is in them. They're really, they're great.
Right, I think I'm going to go over to some lighter greens now. So I'm going to start mixing some <clears throat> because I want to get a bit of light uh, into the whole thing. So um, I think I'm going to use some new white. Let's see what we have that. Right, so I've taken out some white gouache here and I'm going to mix that with... <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to mix that with this colour, which is rich green gold. And then I'm going to add some lemon yellow gouache to the whole thing. So I get a kind of limey green. There. And a bit more white. Okay, so if we have a little look at this now and see over here there's some limey green. Mine's possibly a little bit lighter um, than it is on the photo, but I can always add some pencil there uh, later. Up here we've got some as well, haven't we? Um, there's some. And I'm just going to add a bit of this Prussian green that I had in the background just to green it up a little bit so it's not quite so yellow. I'll add that there. And then down here, and there I've got wet, wet pencil, but that doesn't matter, it can run into it. It doesn't matter at all. And I think we'll lighten that up slightly. And then put that, put that there so I can see it. And then add some here again. I've got the pencil, so it's melting into the pencil, as you can see, which can give quite a nice effect. And a bit more of the Prussian green in my mixture. And now it's going very turquoise, isn't it? And then up here as well, I think. Let's straighten it out a bit so you can see. Up here. And a few dots up there. Then it's actually quite yellow up here, so I'm going to add a bit more there. A bit more water. It's really fun when the pine green that I drew with, when it starts to melt, you get a really nice effect. Oh, nice things happening here. Nothing I'd planned on. And I don't know if you remember yesterday I said, it was yesterday I filmed the last one, um, I said that um, I'm just using this simply as a guide. I'm not trying to um, paint it exactly. Um, although I am following the shapes a bit, um, the colours a bit, but it doesn't. I'm not slavishly following it. Um, it's more as an inspiration. Um, 
often I think uh, when I take photographs I especially when I take sort of flower photographs I tend to take them because um, it takes me a while to take them uh, because I look at them I try different angles I take several of the same subject I try this hipstamatic filter and in a way I do my designing then and there um, which means that when I get to actually um, painting then I've done half the job Right, um, I'm now going to, I think, use a bit more of this light, oops, this light green and fill in a few areas. Really just to uh, get the shapes going a bit more. I've got nothing against the, uh, the brown paper underneath but I I don't really want it to um, show through too much I like using this pointy brush and, and doing it outlines almost drawing with it um, I like the effect that I get I think I'm going to use, I have a magenta pen, uh, pencil here, and I think I'm just going to do a little bit of that in the middle of there. That one has quite a lot. And over here, that bit is actually quite magenta as well. And even up here, it will add a bit there. I must say, I do tend to sort of flit around a bit like a butterfly from area to area when I'm painting. Um, I see something and I don't, I don't finish what I'm painting. I, I can suddenly change tack and go over to something else. I don't know why it's, I sort of go the way my, the way my brain is taking me. Up here, I'm going to do some circles. I'll just show you what it looks like. It's like that over there. I need some little dots around here as well. So I'm going to use this ivory color just to get a bit of light coming up there. Also, it's a bit of pattern, which I like. I like having pattern on my, uh, on my work. At the moment, anyway, that's the, um, that's the mood I'm in, in, in most of the paintings I'm doing at the moment. I seem to be using pattern everywhere. do some little dots here didn't I? Let's do that.
my neighbour who's been putting a new roof on his house. In fact, a new story on his house uh, most of the summer as I've been filming other things. And uh, but it doesn't matter. I quite like I quite like noises off. It's um it's like when I watch people on YouTube and suddenly their dog barks or something. I think that's quite quite nice. It's homely when a dog barks in the background. any second. Right, I think we'll go back to the paint and I'm going to try and mix a really strong green now. Possibly without, oops, without the white. <coughs> Says she, suddenly there's white everywhere. As soon as you add the white, it goes chalky. So let's try and do another green over here that hasn't got white in it. First of all, Prussian green, and then the rich green gold from Daniel Smith, and you get, yeah, a yummy green. So I shall just put that down. I just want to make sure that you can see. Yeah, you can. Right, I think we'll add a bit of this sharp green here and fill in a few areas. Now these are transparent, whoops, bleeding in again, can you see? Um, so even if I work on top of the text, it should, it should work. Here I'm working on the brown and because it's transparent, um, it will probably go a bit dull, but that's okay. some more of that, that Prussian green with the green gold. That's nice. Add a bit of that there. Right, I want a bit more dark up there, and that I used yesterday. I took just Prussian green, so let's see if we can darken that completely. Yes, and then maybe a few, a few darks in and among here. And then down here in this corner, I think. Add a bit of water to that pencil and see what happens. It's almost a bit too purple actually. 
Right, I think we'll take a bit of a bit of white gouache here and I'm going to take some quinacridone magenta and make a pale pale pink to sort of lighten that up a little bit. And as you can see it's just sort of bleeding in. There's a lot of light at the top of that hydrangea. Up there is a pretty flower that's sort of opened. Uh, add a bit of that to the pencil. Sorry, I'm mumbling, so you can't hear me. Um, and over there I had some. Right, I need to do something to this. So I'll just pause, have a little look, maybe dry it all. Oh, I've got a nice little pink blob there. Uh, and then we'll see how that's going. I'm quite pleased with this. Um, the last thing I'm going to try and do is just add a little bit more sort of yellowy green over here because this doesn't look quite finished. Uh, so let's just see what happens. I'm going to have to have a bit of white I see otherwise it's going to it's going to be too transparent. There's a little bit there as well. A little bit over here. I'm just popping, popping a bit of yellow here and there, which is always a good thing. I don't mean it's a good thing to have yellow everywhere, but I mean, if you put some color somewhere, it's quite good just to wander it around the page, um, just so that your eye picks it up, if you know what I mean few dots on there as well I think there just add a bit here and there right that actually goes from that yellow into a dark dark purpley color there um, so I think I'm just going to I'm just going to lighten this up slightly here just a little bit what happens there. okay and then I'm going to get a dark purple now let's see what we shall use for that um, I think I have a sort of indigo color here Payne's gray perhaps it is and I'm just going to mix it with with some magenta that I think will work and I'm just going to let it bleed into that yellow and then bring it down here a little bit as well there and then possibly again wander around the page slightly uh, we could have a little bit in the middle here maybe maybe over by the blue just blob it blob it blob it here and there i think i'll do that as well just a bit there and i see i've drawn something that's light over there so i need a bit of i need something slightly lighter there so i'll just bring that in there we are. Right. 
Anything else? See if I like what's happening to that. It looks like it could be taking over the entire yellow. So I'll just clean my brush, flatten it, and empty it of water, and then drag that down a bit. There, that's better. And then maybe a, a line around it with that colour. Okay. Right then, um, I think I'm going to call that a day. Uh, I'm going to dry the whole thing and then I'll show you this folding business. Okay, so let's go on to the folding part. So if you remember, this is a, an an A3 size poster, which they have folded. And I'll be quite honest, I'm not very mathematical. So I've tried all sorts of different ways of doing this. And I was never very good at origami when I was little because I was just too clumsy, really. Um, but I have discovered that if you measure from the edge 19 centimetres and from that edge 19 centimetres and you draw yourself a straight line, then you can fold in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I would do that on my drawing. I just want to say that this is an A3 piece of paper, the same size as my as my painting. And A3 is always, um, let's get this right, 42 centimetres by 29.7 centimetres. I'm really sorry if you work in inches. Uh, I've lived in Sweden too long, so I'm in centimetres. And I'm, I presume you can get A4, um, sorry, A3 uh, in both England and America. So we'll stick with centimetres. So you measure from that edge to there and you do a line and then that edge to there and you do a line and then I'll show you how to fold it. Now I've done my line fairly bold so that you can see it on the camera. I'm not going to be doing quite as bold uh, on the back of my because I don't really want the inside of my envelope to have lines in it um, but I just thought I'd do that so that you could see. So let's now go over to the painting and there we have the back. Now as you can see, it starts to curl up slightly. You know what you can do? You can actually go and iron it. Um, I usually take some uh, copy paper, put it over. First of all, put copy paper on the ironing board and then I put copy paper over it and then I iron it. Uh, I won't do that now, but um, that's what I probably would do um, if I was going to, maybe I should go and do it. I'll go and do it. Okay, so I've ironed it. So now we're going to measure 19 centimetres from this edge and that is there and then 19 centimetres from that edge and that is there and I'm going to turn it around so I don't get my head in front of the camera and do 19 centimetres there that's in the right place and 19 centimeters there as well okay so now we draw some lines and as I say I'm not going to do very dark lines you probably could rub them out with an eraser later if you wanted to because uh, these are really only guidelines for me there's that one and that one there. Right. There. Okay. Right. So what we do is this. This this corner here, this edge, I am going to fold to the far side. Not this one, the one at the far side. So let us see how I do that when I'm not... So I don't get my head in the camera. There we are. Right. 
little bit there, pressing it down a little bit there, okay. And then we'll turn this one around and I'll now do the same thing, this edge over to the far side. So let us see, so we get the right place and put it along the edge and there and hold it tight and then press it down like that and then we fold this one this edge to the far side and let's see so we get it in the right place there and the, the easiest thing is to hold it along the line before you press right as you can see i'm not doing that because i've got quite a rough surface here and i don't want to smear any of my um, lines as you can see i'm getting a bit blue anyway right now we'll do the same thing again looks like i can i was a bit too careful with that one that's a bit more you can see that i didn't get it exactly on the right place either how typical when i'm filming okay right and then we do this one again and that again has to go along the line so hold it on the line there i'm sure you can see better than i can whether i'm on the right spot and there we go there now if i was doing this without a camera I, it probably would be slightly more accurate I've probably got it maybe half a millimetre out or something. Right, so now we fold it and we fold it and then we fold it back on itself here. Like, like this. So that that is straight and, and that is straight. Like that. And then we do the same thing on this side and we fold this down so that it's straight along there. I'm having to sort of force it slightly but once you've done this and I mean I could sort of use my ruler I probably could even do something like that but I don't want to crack the paper which I just did so don't do that. Okay so there's the envelope and then what we need is that maybe a piece of, piece of washi tape or something just to put it there. Uh, you probably could use sort of, um, what's it called, Velcro or something I suppose, uh, self-adhesive Velcro on the back um, if you wanted to. But there is my, there's my envelope and so I can open it up and I can put some of my postcards in. I'll just fetch them over here. There. Right, and then close it up again. And then if you can imagine a little piece of tape or something, and there we have it. And if you wanted to, you could sort of do um, an address uh, label or something on it if you were going to send it through the post. Uh, but otherwise, I'm very pleased with that. So uh, I hope you have fun doing it. I must say I have had fun doing it. So we'll see what I come up with for the next project. <laughs> Thanks ever so much for watching. It's really good of you and uh, hope it goes well for you. Okay, bye-bye.